everybody, welcome to episode four of Vinyl Fetish, where we talk about music and records. I'm Randy, this Andy. is Andy. And we're, we're just wrapping up our first day in New York. Uh, we're heading uptown, but we're gonna be going back town to look for some vinyl. And we've had a, one full day in New York City. This is your first trip to the Big Apple. <laughs> Why do you like tell us? This is like take four, I've had to say this so long, so much. Well. Pierogies. Pierogies. The Met. The Met. The, the people, the women. The cabs. The women, like what it. about the women? They cabs. Okay. <laughs> and so there are, um, one of the things New York is lacking are good record stores. They've all been closing right and left. So we're going to go down to the village uh, in a little bit and check out one really good record store, find some vinyl to report back on you, play it, spin it in our room, and then we're probably just going to go eat more pierogies. The last of the record stores. Of New York City. Okay. Ready? All right, let's On do it. Way. having a little bit of a connection to New York. It actually has more of a connection to Florida. Um, you know, we are in the land of Studio 54, so this is going to be our listening for the night. Okay, sounds good. So it could be worth it, I promise. I want to dance. Okay, got Bee Gees, main course. <laughs> we're back. Well, here we are in Portland. We were going to finish it, this in New York, but we got too busy uh, going to Russian bars and drinking in Russian bars. And, and then uh, walking to Russian bars. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Uh, we did uh, manage to end up in that one great record store in the village, Generations Record Records. Yeah, they were, you know, they that were a little one. Bit, that one. The record. single one. The one. And I got some great stuff, uh, including uh, the soundtrack to, to Serve With Love, 1967. The reason I became a college professor is this movie. Who is that the professor? Sydney Poitier. Yeah, Mr. Thackeray. Okay. Um, you didn't become a professor I, because of the. Death Poet Society? No, no, way before that. Patti LaBelle's original band, The Blue Bells. I love a, this cover. That is pretty great. Look at that cover. Uh, I got a, this is Glenn Miller, because I'm re sort of rediscovering the big band greats. And I also got a Joe Jackson record, Mike's Murder, which I think I left on the subway. It didn't make it back to Portland. <laughs> I know I bought it for a buck ninety-nine. Um, but the one that we're going to talk about today, uh, here at episode four, is the Bee Gees main course summer so i want to know when i pulled this out of the stack what did you think when you saw Bee Gees? <laughs> i hate you hate the Bee Gees? no i just thought of hate what, what what why because i don't like their voices oh it's fucking annoying as hell yeah you probably think of the justin timberlake it's just version a very and not that i'm like against feminine man voices but I don't know why you would say that <laughs> I just like. Eh. Well, very interesting that you say that because this is actually the first record where they started doing Barry Gibb started doing the high falsetto voice. Do so, you guys like that? But, I mean, I want to know if you guys like. I, but I bet voices. I bet I can flip her mind by playing a couple songs from this record. <laughs> okay. So let me you just a little try. background. Can I tell you a little bit of background of this record? Yeah. It was Recorded in crazy. Miami in 1970 in 70 late. 74, early 75, where the disco thing was happening in Eric Clapton's studio. And they're very influenced. They've been like this ballad band. Because you, you know that song, To Love Somebody, To Love Somebody, To Love Somebody. The Way I Love You. You got it. Covered by everybody, including Nina Simone. Yes. Uh, How Do You Mend a Broken Heart. Oh, that's a good song. Yeah, right. Al Green did a great version of it. So they were like this ballad band, and then they were hanging out in Miami with this kind of disco producer. So... When you think disco, I mean, you probably have, like, 70s disco. What's your thought? What comes to mind? Um, 
John Travolta. <laughs> yeah, so Saturday Night Fever, right? Well, this is before that. This okay. is before all that happened. So it wasn't it. even on the radar. So it was kind of a new thing, and they were the sort of the pioneers. And so I, I'm really anxious to see what what you'll Did hear. Did they get... You know how they have, the, like, the disco look with, like, the bell-bottom pants? Yeah. Do they get that look from John Lennon? Because remember, like, <laughs> when he... Well, like, yeah. he well, has, like, was... the same exact look in mm. um, Abby... No, and Abbey, Abbey Road. Road. Yeah. The si he looks Are like a Fiji. John Lennon and Venet Disco? <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I'm just saying they got something off yeah, of Yeah, they did. Well, they were very... And the Bee Gees were very influenced by the Beatles. They had a... The so, Bee Gees, does that mean, like... Brothers so, Gibb. Oh. Brothers Gibb. Okay, got it. So, uh, the first song I'm going to play is called Nights on Broadway. And we spent a lot of nights on Broadway in New York. Did we? <laughs> we were, <laughs> we were walking everywhere. somewhere on Broadway. You're either on the west side or the east side, depending on what side of Broadway you're on. Yeah. So I, w I want you to listen to this and think about before the disco explosion and before the kind of Bee Gees that you, know, you immediately have that gut re response to that we just saw. <laughs> um, okay. All right, and I, I we'll get your response. Okay. you like this. <laughs> Come on, we're in New York. 70s. <laughs> A lot of shirts unbuttoned all the way down. I wish I could have been there. Are you drunk? No, I should be. Your night. It's the night, you're going out to the club. Okay, okay, let me get into it. <laughs> we could do the hustle. I can't remember. I was only 11. We gotta get to the chorus. Brings back some memories. No, but it's cool. Okay. It's tolerable. Okay. So what did you think, Andy? Uh, I I like his voice is not as like up. Mhm. Mm Cause it's just too much in those in yeah. the disco. Crazy. Yeah, it's sort. It's a little bit before disco. I mean, disco got so annoying. It got, like everything became disco. It was just. But in a way, like you love to, you secretly do like it. Yeah, right? oh, that's not like even the first time I heard "Staying Alive." The first time I heard it, I was like, oh, "You're my like, God, this is good." You're like, "Come and, on, let's move." Yeah, and then I was. I learned that I was supposed to hate it. But okay, so this next one, there's another thing to listen to. So I'm gonna play the the really big hit off it, which is a song called "Jive Talking." Okay. And one of the things. <coughs> One of the things, sorry. One of the things that's interesting I want you to hear is that made it that made it new is Maurice Gibb is the bass player, but there's also a synth player, and he's playing the bass, okay. guitar, and there's a synth player playing the low notes at the like same the, time. Like the the ones in um, Love Shack. Yeah, yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit like that. B fifty twos. Yeah. But this is you know way way before seventy five. So it was this was very innovative. The sound this like double low sound double the bass. And the synth. Okay. Uh, and then the song comes in. And then I just have to say, listening to this on the radio as an 11 year old was, was magical, even though I'm not Aww. allowed to like the Bee Gees. But um, <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Okay, here we go. It's like that's the synth. Need so some dumb. disco lights. Yeah, where's our disco ball? Mm -hmm. I know this one. Yeah, the yeah, guys. Yeah, I can chill. Yeah. It's like ultra low. Like it was so new at the time with the high voice. Get thrust to it. 
Here. Yeah, and there's a part where you know they have the hand claps. He, he's oh, his voice is more subdued. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit. It's, a, it's, it's it, like bit. you're in the room with him and he's singing that to you. Ooh, wow. Well, it's like almost like a whisper. all of a sudden became right? a very sexual band. I never thought of it like that. <laughs> oh my God, we used to, like in you your, turn that into in everything. Your... We could be listening to, you know, Snoopy versus a Red Bear and turn it into a. I sexual... love that song. <laughs> I'm gonna get on my 45s. What? So, yeah. No, so you can okay. see, but you can see, you can see how when that came on the radio, people just wanted more of that sound. That like that, boom, 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 that kind of like really funky synth sound mm -hmm. is was new to the ears in 1975. Who do you think um, would be the Bee Gees of now? <laughs> your brother, the brothers give what? Like the Jonas Brothers or something? No, not them. Are but you... maybe like Portugal the Men. Oh, because sure, that, yeah, yeah. Because the guy that sings for Portugal, he what? has a, a higher. Well, have you ever voice. heard the Scissor Sisters? They came no, out. No. They have that song "Take Take Mama Out" about coming out to. Her oh mom. yeah, 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 yeah. They are yeah. very Bee Gees influenced. Very yeah. Bee Gees influenced. And they're pretty contemporary. Yeah, okay. and they like to. Boogie. So I just thought, we, you know, since we were in New York, we needed a song that had uh, a little bit of a New York connection, Studio 54 and disco, but also had the feel of the, mm -hmm. the city in the 70s, which is when it was like last time it was cool, apparently. Yeah, apparently you don't know any other cool places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every place I wanted to go that was cool was like cool in 1963, apparently. And Apparently. you lost a tooth eating your falafel. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a filling at my moon's falafels on McDougal. Thanks for telling everybody that. <laughs> so, but otherwise, it was a good trip. It was a great trip. McCoy Tyner I... played two songs. That was really awesome. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, we're going to be doing more vinyl. I think next week we're going to... Actually, the next episode is my turn. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, Get ready. Oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. <laughs> We've also had a request to, uh, at some point, bring our three-year-old and let her dance, which will be <laughs> a highlight. <laughs> yeah. So, um, maybe more Bee Gees? I don't know. So, we hope you like this, our little trip to New York. Uh, we'll, we will be going on the road. What do you guys think about the Bee Gees? Yeah, what do you think do the you Bee Gees? Do you listen to them? Can, are they, now that it's been so long, is it okay to like them? Do you hate them? Do you think it's okay to hate them? It's okay. <laughs> well, they're almost all dead now, so it's kind of like poor Barry. He's the last one standing. So, all right. so that's it. Uh, please like us and subscribe to us and comment to us and tell us what records we should play, and what I should turn Andy on to, what she should turn me on to, and we'll be back next week with a, apparently something I've never heard before. So that should be really good. Latin. Latin twist. Latino. Latinx. <laughs>